For the last 14 years, we've been sampling tissues systematically from hunter-harvested beluga. This is primarily in the Western Arctic, in the Beaufort Sea, and these are animals that are taken as part of a traditional hunt recognized by the Inuit. We're afforded an opportunity by the hunters themselves in order to be able to obtain tissue samples. The hunters themselves are very concerned about food safety and security. They want to ensure that these are very healthy animals not only from a human health perspective, but also because these animals are so intimately entwined with their natural history and folklore. There are theoretical risks associated with recent changes in the climate, and in no greater area in the world has that had a greater impact than in the Arctic, where there have been dramatic changes in the rate of ice retreat, ice development, and so th there are consequences in the environment that may not only impact the whales themselves, but also their prey species, as well as potential pathogen exposure. Pathogens are typically um, contained by ecological barriers. It could be a mechanical barrier, so uh, such as ice sheets. It could be a um, uh, definitive host barrier. Climate change has really blurred the lines for these ecological barriers, and and I think that. Um, Ice is a seriously important ecological barrier. There's a, a, a series of pathogens that are circulating in the, let's call it the lower 48 in the United States, and they don't tend to go north because of cold temperatures and they can't actually in, invade to cause disease in the northern waters. Whereas there are also pathogens that are endemic in, in polar regions of the planet, and like the Arctic. And what's now happening is that with the big thaw, and the, um, there's a breakdown of these ecological barriers, and so you've got liberation of parasites from the north that are coming south uh, to cause infections in a new susceptible range of animals, and likewise pathogens that have created a sort of status quo in, in the lower 48 are now emerging to cause disease among susceptible populations um, that haven't been exposed to these parasites in the Arctic. In terms of human health, toxoplasma is the agent to be worried about. It is actually the leading cause of infectious blindness worldwide. It can also cause fetal abortions. So if you're infected in utero, it can cause a fatal um, um, infection for the fetus and, um, and if you become immunocompromised. In fact, toxoplasma was first really come to fruition or in prominence during the HIV AIDS epidemic as um, no, it was known as an AIDS-defining um, organism. In the Western Arctic, we consider the sentinel species to include ring seals, bowhead and beluga, and we really look at these as canaries in the coal mine, trying to look at the impact of anthropogenic activities, potential impacts associated with climate change, and many other environmental factors. The intent is to look at long-term changes in these populations of microbes in these whales and whether there's a, a changes as associated with climate change, whether there may be anthropomorphic activities that, or other stressors that may change the composition of the bacteria and potentially result in disease development in these animals. To our shock and amazement, we are finding that a large array of different marine mammals are infected with these land-based parasites at really high prevalence rates. And it can be approaching sometimes up to 60% of these marine mammal sentinels are infected with these parasites. Marine mammals are a major staple in the diet of Arctic communities. And we're seeing that, that with the big thaw, they're being caught by hunters and processed for food. And they're actually importing this parasite into the north and because this parasite can cause serious disease in people, we have to actually pay attention to its emergence in the north as a, as a new potential threat for the um, um, food safety.